Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to examine a critical facet of cybersecurity and privacy, ISO standards. Now, the topic of ISO standards can be a little bit overwhelming because there are a lot of standards out there, but it's important to understand that some of these ISO standards hold more significance than others, allowing you to prioritize your time as you prepare for your next certification exam. Standards come in different forms across different fields. And you've most likely had to adhere to some degree of standards in your own life already. But the definition of standards in the world of cybersecurity and privacy is a little different than those in other matters. Standards are important to professionals in cybersecurity and privacy because they provide benchmarks to measure ourselves against and protocols for making sure we have all of our bases covered. As a whole, standards are used to establish best practices that ensure we carry out proper procedures. The standards most often used in cybersecurity and privacy are the ISO standards created by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, which consists of standards bodies from over 160 member countries. These member organizations work together in developing and promoting international standards covering many different areas. Some of these are about information security, but others cover things like quality management, health and safety, and food safety. These detailed documents provide comprehensive guidance on each standard, and they're sold by ISO and its member organizations. Now, you should know that because of this, adopting ISO standards can be expensive. The documents themselves can be pricey, and if you choose to be audited and certified against the standards, that's also going to be a potentially expensive undertaking. Another noteworthy point is that despite the international recognition of ISO standards, these standards aren't laws, and they don't reflect regulations by government bodies like the European Union or the U.S. government. However, some industries may be required to comply with these standards as part of their normal business practices. Now, the first standard that we're going to cover is ISO 27001. This is probably the most well-recognized security program standard globally, and it's accepted by many regulators and jurisdictions as meeting due care requirements for reducing your liability. Many organizations follow these ISO standards for a variety of their business functions. It provides a standard international model for the development and implementation of policies, procedures, and guidelines that take into account stakeholder involvement using a top-down approach to address and manage risk in your organization. ISO 27001 is built on the premise that information should be adequately secured with practices that are accepted and recognized by the industry as a whole. It's platform and product agnostic, meaning that it can be customized for any organization, no matter what specific technologies you use. The second standard also relates to an organization's information security program, just like ISO 27001. ISO 27002 provides additional details, going beyond control objectives by describing the specific controls that organizations might want to use to achieve those objectives. ISO 27002 covers important areas of security, including risk assessment and treatment, security policy, the organization of information security, and asset management. ISO 27002 also includes additional recommended security controls. These include restricting logical access to personal information through the use of strong identification, authentication, and authorization procedures. It includes applying strong encryption to any personal information that's transmitted over public networks, as well as conducting periodic tests of security safeguards that are used to protect personal information. The next ISO standard that we need to talk about, ISO 27017, provides standard guidance for information security controls applicable to the provisioning and use of cloud services. This standard is really crucial because it provides standards not only for providing cloud services, but also for how organizations might use those services as cloud customers. Now remember, ISO standards aren't law. ISO 27017 is based upon ISO 27002, which deals with those information security controls more generally. Many of the topics within the scope of this standard are found on certification exams, including the Certified Cloud Security Professional, or CCSP, exam. The topics covered by this standard include information security policies, organizing information security, human resource security, and cryptography. 
Now, before we go through the rest of this selection of essential ISO standards, I just want to take a brief moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On this site, you have access to free study plans that will help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. These plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this CertMike Explains video, please click the like button below to help other people on their journey toward certification. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Now, the ISO standards that we've just covered are some of the most important ISO standards to have knowledge of as you prepare for a cybersecurity certification exam. You'll want to know those in detail. There are also four more standards that you'll want to know about, but for these, you really only need to know the general purpose of the standard. ISO 27037 is a global digital forensics standard. It's one standard out of a set that helps establish procedures across borders in an effort to limit the challenges to findings during trials and other uses of evidence. ISO 27037 is a guide for collecting, identifying, and preserving electronic evidence. ISO 27050 is another global digital forensic standard in the same vein as 27037. The difference with this one is that 27050 provides standards for electronic discovery, or e-discovery. E-discovery refers to the process of identifying and obtaining electronic evidence for either prosecutorial or litigation purposes. ISO 27701 covers best practices for implementing privacy controls, and it is closely linked to other standards like 27001 and 002, the two ISO standards governing information security that we examined earlier in this video. ISO 27701, in contrast to those standards, provides guidance for managing privacy rather than security controls. Now, you have to be really careful when you're looking at these standard numbers. It's very easy to confuse ISO 27001 and ISO 27701. ISO 27001 covers information security, while ISO 27701 covers privacy. Be sure to read those zeros and sevens very carefully. The last ISO standard in our selection of essential standards is ISO 31000. This provides guidance for risk management programs. ISO 31000's focus on risk management can help organizations reach their goals, recognize opportunities, and use appropriate resources for risk management and treatment. Before we move on to talking about the process of creating an ISO standard, I want to provide you with this reference table. You can use it to remember each one of these ISO standards and its general purpose. If you'd like, pause the video now and grab a screenshot of this table to help you study. Now earlier, I mentioned the development of ISO standards by highly qualified experts. ISO embraces some key principles as they go through this process. These are response to a need in the market, global expert opinion, development of standards through a multi-stakeholder process, and consensus. Rather than choose to form new standards on their own, ISO responds to industry associations and consumer groups that convey a request for a new standard. Then, experts from around the world develop and negotiate the standard draft from all angles. These committees are composed of experts in their respective fields, as well as members of consumer associations, academia, non-governmental organizations, and government regulators. The publication of an ISO standard ultimately requires consensus among these committees. ISO develops standards through a methodical six-stage process. These stages are proposal, preparatory, committee, inquiry, approval, and publication. Let's talk about each one of these stages. In the proposal stage, a request is submitted to ISO, typically by an industry association or consumer organization. The need for the standard is then assessed by the appropriate ISO committee. In the preparatory stage, subject matter experts and industry stakeholders prepare and evaluate a working draft of the standard. In the optional committee stage, review and comments can be made. And then we move on to the inquiry stage, where the draft is identified as a Draft International Standard, or DIS, and it's either voted through to publication or modified. 
In the approval stage, the draft standard is then the Final Draft International Standard, or FDIS, and it's taken to a vote. And then finally, in the publication stage, the standard is officially published. Now, ISO standards can seem a little confusing, but with enough review and some effort to differentiate between them, you should be able to stay on top of this subject for your exam. I hope this video helped you understand what ISO standards are and what some of them will mean to you on the exam and beyond. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.